So let's look at some more problems on the, our motion here. And we've got this time a particle hung at the end of a vertical string. And we let that position be the origin. Particles pulled down d meter. So, and then find the expression for its velocity in terms of position, in terms of time. So in terms of x, in terms of t. Given that the particle experiences acceleration proportional to its distance from the origin. Well, what does that mean? So acceleration is equal to acceleration proportional to its distance from the origin. So we're looking at where it is. So we had our position at the origin. It was pulled down. So it was pulled there. So if we take our acceleration acting in that direction, we'll take it as minus k times x because it's proportional to the position. So if that's the case, v to v dx equals minus kx, we're going to have that starting point there. You could start with that, have that starting point as well. That would be fine because you could, you'll get to this statement either as well. So either starting points would be fine here because that's what you'll end up with. So we, we, we separate and we put our dx over there. We get v to v is equal to minus kx dx. Basically, we're going to integrate both sides with respect to their variables. So v to v gives us the half v squared, which you're seeing there. And minus kx dx gives us minus kx squared on 2. We've got a constant. And we know it was pulled down. So it's at and it's where it starts. It started at rest there. And x was equal to d. So c ends up being kd squared once we put that in. We get our half v squared is equal to minus a half kx squared plus kd squared on 2. Multiply through by 2. We get our v squared is equal to that. And v would equal square root of kd squared minus kx squared. So there's our velocity in terms of its position. What about velocity in terms of time? Well, we're going back to, we're going to use this idea. The velocity is equal to, its, so instead of v, we're going to use dx dt, and that's going to be the square root of kd squared minus kx squared. So we're going to do this relationship. We manipulate our algebra to get the minus 1 on square root of k there, and times 1 on d squared minus x squared. And then we're going to integrate both of these. So we get the k squared across there. We'll take our dx across there. Integrate to get minus kt. This integrates to minus inverse sine of x on d. We need to get our constant. So we know when t is equal to 0, d x was equal to d. Sub it in. And the constant will be equal to minus pi on 2. So there's our expression. We want t... Uh, we want x in terms of t, so then we can do a little mani manipulation. So we add our, our pi on 2 across there, and then take the sign of both sides, divide by the d to get x in terms of t there, and then to get v in terms of t, we, divide, we derive both sides, so dx dt, which is equal to v, and derive this one, we get d root k, cos of root kt, plus pi on 2. So we did a little bit differently in that we started with the velocity, when, but it was in terms of x. So we got t, we put it as derivative of x with respect to t, and then manipulated that to get t in terms of x, and then got x in terms of t, so we could drive with respect to t to get our velocity. So there's a little bit of manipulation that went on in that one. This time we've got acceleration is given by k outside of 1 minus v squared. V is the velocity, find the expression of velocity in terms of t, and find the position expression for position in terms of velocity. So, this, we're doing the second part first here, in that we've got our acceleration k times 1 v squared, minus v squared, and we're going to take our acceleration as v to v dx. So, we can start to manipulate that to get dv on dx as k on v, 1 minus v squared, which allows us to look at this one and say, well, that's going to, when we derive that, that's going to give us a, a log function. So we manipulate to get dx is equal to minus 1 on 2k times minus 2v on 1 minus v squared. So we can really see our log function there. Got our constants out. So 
that just become in, integrates to log of 1 minus v squared and the constant stays out the front plus a v of c. So going to get t, we're going to deal with uh, our function here as dv to t this time because we were looking for velocity in terms of t. So there's going to be... So if we want to integrate this, we need to go to partial fractions. So we haven't shown the partial fractions, but it comes up with a half as the numerators on both of those, which works out nicely because that just integrates to a half out the front of natural log of 1 plus v. So this one gives us minus natural log of 1 minus v. So there's our integrals done at this point. So what we want, though, is v in terms of t. So here comes, here comes our algebraic manipulation. So multiply through by 2, collect these into one term. Then to get, using our definitional logarithm, we can just say 1 plus v on 1 minus v is e to the power of that function there. We still want to get v by itself. Not as easy as it seems. So we expand, we multiply by 1 minus v on both sides and expand that function. And then we're going to collect our terms in V, so we can factorise the V out, and then divide by the factorised term to leave V by itself. And there's our function of V in terms of T. That one, not easy. That one, that's a lot of manipulation. We've got to set up and realise where we're going to start with. Start integrating, one side works out nicely, the other one needs partial fraction. But then our algebraic manipulation to get V by itself is starts to be that starts to be a little bit difficult. So be careful with all these terms. There's lots of terms there. So be careful what you've got there. You might need to go through it again to really get that manipulation to get down to V equals to that expression.